ahead, Damon. All right, Good we morning. are live. <clears throat> Thanks, Damon. Good morning, let's get started. Welcome to the COVID-19 Manufacturing Recovery and Preparedness Webinar Series. This 45 minute program is being conducted live on Tuesday, April 28, 2020. I am Maddie Merton, Vice President of Business Retention and Expansion of the Economic Development Board for Tacoma Pierce County. I want to thank our manufacturing community who have generously offered to support our frontline workers in producing much needed PPE and have kept producing essential products. Because of your quick response and contributions, Tacoma Pierce County will emerge out of this crisis stronger. We believe that having a plan to prepare your facilities to restart and developing your capabilities to operate is essential to getting your employees back to work and meeting the needs of your customers. The Economic Development Board and Impact Washington are hosting four separate online meetings for manufacturers every Tuesdays and Thursdays until May 7th. Experts from Impact Washington will share guidance on recovery and preparation best practices. These online meetings target the critical needs of our manufacturing community. Each meeting is pre-scheduled with an opportunity for our audience members to ask questions at the very end. Also, hosting today's call, I am pleased to have online my two partners in this effort, Jeff Lawrence, South Sound Account Executive, and Joseph Gosar, South Sound Account Executive of, of Impact Washington. My compliments to Jeff and his team for handling all of the logistics around these meetings. I want to thank the sponsors of these recurring calls, City of Lakewood, City of Puyallup, City of Sumner, City of Tacoma, and Pierce County. Questions can be submitted at any time. For those on a webinar, you can write a question and submit it using a space provided. Or for those calling in, you can email jgosar at impactwashington.org. Once the panelists conclude, we will get right to the questions and get through as many as possible. Also, this meeting is being recorded live and will be posted on the EDB and Impact Washington website. Now I would like to turn the mic over to Jeff Lawrence. Thank you, Maddie. And also thank you to the EDB Tacoma Pierce for, uh, uh, for partnering on this to host us. Um, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Impact Washington, uh, but before we do that, uh, I'd like to make the note that, they, um, that all these webinars uh, are going to be the same. Uh, there will basically be the same content. Uh, they will be recorded and they'll be available to watch afterwards uh, in case anyone missed it. Please spread this to your partners, to suppliers, clients, if you feel it would be useful to them. Also, if you, uh, if you have to leave uh, early, you can click on the, on the same link uh, that you got to get here and there will be a recording of the, of the webinar in its entirety. Um, so Impact Washington is a statewide nonprofit organization uh, who, uh, who supports manufacturers, small and medium-sized manufacturers in the state of Washington. We provide uh, fee-based consulting, education, training opportunities, and we, uh, our mission is to support the manufacturing community in every corner of the state. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Impact Washington is the Washington State Center of the Manufacturing Extension Partnership Network, a nationwide public-private partnership that supports small and medium-sized manufacturers in every state and Puerto Rico. We're known uh, largely for our workforce training in lean, leadership, and consulting in many manufacturing-related areas. Um, next slide, please. We've been around for over 20 years and have helped the Washington State manufacturing community realize um, increased sales and revenues, uh, new investments, uh, creating and retaining jobs, and cost savings in their operations. And these are, these are numbers that are attained from third-party surveys that follow the delivery of all of our services as, uh, as mandated 
by by the Manufacturing Extension National Network. And so uh, we're very proud of the work that we do here in the state of Washington, supporting manufacturers and helping them be, be more successful and, uh, uh, and competitive. Uh, next slide, please. We have an accomplished team of uh, leaders who have been in the manufacturing industry uh, and, and all across the supply chain. Our team averages over 30 years of hands-on experience. Uh, we've worked uh, in industry as owners, uh, executives, consultants, operations managers. Uh, the common thread is that we're all very familiar with manufacturing in the manufacturing environment. We've dealt with many of the challenges our clients face, and uh, so we we feel that we are able to uh, able to provide uh, support for our manufacturers in this unusual time. We and our large network of resource partners are now offering support to manufacturers in this time of uncertainty related to COVID-19, providing no cost guidance on recovery preparedness for continuing or returning to operations. The um, uh, EDB and our other partners in Pierce County are reaching out to Pierce County manufacturing community to offer assistance to enable you to, to continue or return to work safely and with confidence. An overview of the presentation, we'll have a high level, we'll, we'll talk about high level steps for site and facility compliance, discuss best practices and housekeeping recommendations in a broad, uh, uh, in a broad manner. Um, and we'll talk about uh, an employer risk uh, assessment that we can facilitate, which will classify worker exposure, uh, recommend Im and implement uh, uh, workplace controls and, and help you to develop an exposure risk decision matrix. And we'll end up the, uh, the session with a Q&A so that you can ask any specific questions you might have about what we're offering. So the MEP National Network uh, was included in the $2 trillion CARES Act um, with some funding for all of our centers to be able to reach out as, uh, as we are to help the manufacturing community prepare for, for a pandemic response. Um, we are uh, here to assist uh, manufacturers in this time of need. Obviously, this is a very difficult time for, for, not only, uh, for not only employees and manufacturers, but for owners and, uh, and managers. So we wanna to offer tools to manufacturers to be able to help you get back to work safely and in a timely manner. There are, we're doing this by providing uh, uh, three high-level steps for site compliance. Number one is to review your existing procedures, comment on your facility best practices and housekeeping recommendations. Number two, conduct a specific uh, employer risk assessment based on position or area exposure. And number three, uh, work with the employers to assist in implementation of workplace controls based on the risk of, of exposures. So the review element of these high-level steps, uh, this is where the start of our efforts will focus. Um, we'll talk about uh, health screening, best practices and recommendations, creating social distancing, which can be done with procedure or with engineering controls, as we'll discuss later, um, making sure that there is the encouragement and the facility to practice good health habits and other best practices that are, uh, that are tailored to to each individual site because everyone, uh, everything is going to differ. Every site is going to differ from the other. So um, digging a little deeper into the best practices and housekeeping keeping recommendations, we'll look at common places, clocking in and out practices, entering and exiting the facility, common tools that are used, what happens during shift change when there's a lot of interaction, what to do about lunch and break rooms, Engineering controls, which means uh, making changes which will facilitate uh, social distancing 
uh, and perhaps uh, 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 separation or physical barriers in order to uh, in order to facilitate um, uh, that that uh, that distancing. Um, discuss office and clerical work. That's a little bit of a different environment than the manufacturing environment. Uh, we'll address laundry, streamlining quality act, uh, activities, and talk about uh, some additional considerations. Uh, to help employers determine appropriate precautions, OSHA has divided job tasks into four exposure levels, very high, high, medium, and lower. Next slide, please. High and very high are likely uh, going to be related to healthcare and first responder uh, professions. Most workers will likely fall in medium or lower exposure risk categories in manufacturing. OSHA looks at three code requirements for workplace safety. Uh, the general duty clause, which is the employer has a duty to create a workplace free from risk and hazards to the degree possible. Bloodborne pathogens. This is written more toward healthcare and first responders, uh, and it's written to prevent uh, the transfer of pathogens via bodily fluids. And PPE. Uh, there's a requirement to provide appropriate PPE for the risks that are present in the workplace. So the conduct portion of the um, high-level support that we're giving. Is to, uh, is to do a workplace evaluation on the basis of exposure risk for a specific operation. Engineering controls, uh, look at ventilation, physical barriers, the plant layout or the, or the layout of, the, uh, of operations uh, to see if there are ways to, to minimize uh, or to mitigate uh, as much contact as possible. Uh, administrative controls. This is uh, process, procedures, and best practices. And then PPE. Uh, make sure that appropriate PPE is available for conditions of risk and to ensure and, and develop procedures to ensure that the, uh, that the PPE uh, is used in the facility. So here's an example of a risk assessment with workplace controls based on a position or an area exposure. This is just a, uh, just a very kind of high level uh, system form. This looks at a, um, at a shear press operator, uh, basically talks about the job duties, it, uh, exposure risk level, it's a, it's a lower risk, risk level, engineering changes, is there anything needed to be done to the layout or to put up barriers or, or whatever? In this particular instance, uh, none was determined. Administrative, social distancing, good health habits, spacing in lunchroom, halls and, and, uh, and entryways. And we'll talk about training for employees and also facilitating uh, the ability for them to be able to social distance uh, in the most effective manner. PPE, in this instance, no additional PPE required. Uh, however, uh, we recommend that uh, that uh, that PPE is is made available for those employees who want to use it. For example, face masks. Uh, while it might not be required, there may be employees who would feel more comfortable wearing a face mask while working. So um, we go through all the positions in the in the operation and help you build a workplace risk assessment form. Uh, that would be appropriate and custom designed for your operation. So, um, the implement element of the high level steps for compliance are to work with the individual operations to work through the process. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Each operation needs policies that are specifically tailored to the operation specifically. Uh, risk relevant to the employees or those they may encounter during work. So we'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but, but first of all, on the next slide, I'd like to point out that um, there are, uh, that there was a really, at the beginning of this crisis, Impact Washington was involved with the Department of Commerce, the governor's office and others 
serving as a matchmaker to identify critical needs and to mobilize manufacturers to produce those goods. Uh, and, I, and I must say that a lot of uh, manufacturers, a lot of partners in, the, uh, in Pierce County were very, um, were very great and, and very gracious to, to offer their services and to offer to, to change over to manufacture some of this much needed PPE. And it was a little bit of a, it was a little bit of an ad hoc process because uh, because because there was, there's really no uh, no no consideration for, for how that should be organized before we got into it. Um, this has gotten a lot more um, this has gotten a lot more organized now. There's a private sector PPE exchange uh, dashboard which is now live, which is put on uh, put on by FEMA, uh, and uh, basically it's a uh, it's a forum to connect private sector sellers with private sector buyers. So um, we, have, we have links uh, on this presentation. Uh, if you want to access this, you can, you can just click on that and, and go to the dashboard. If you have PPE to offer or if you have PPE that you need, uh, you can go there and you can, uh, you can say what you have and, um, uh, and uh, that will connect you with people who are in need or vice versa. Uh, for those of you on the call via phone or who cannot write this information right now, uh, the complete information is being recorded once again, and the recording in the slides will be available on Impact Washington, uh, on the EDB uh, website, and probably many of our uh, of our sponsor websites. And a recording of the of the presentation, as I mentioned, is available by clicking the webinar link to which you entered once the webinar is is completed. Also. Uh, Amazon has a supplier site for uh, sellers for PPE to register and sell items. If your PPE either doesn't meet FDA standards or you can't get traction on the FEMA site, you can offer them on Amazon Business or Amazon.com. And this is a this is a link uh, which or this is information and a link will take you to that page where you can. Um, you can start to get involved with with offering your products uh, on the Amazon. And as noted on the slide, uh, if your products are sold on the COVID supply site, Amazon will waive referral fees currently. Um, so after you register, the Amazon team will reach out to understand more about you and your products, so they can make sure that uh, that appropriate products are being offered. But this is a this is a good opportunity if you have. Uh, uh, if you have items that are available for for sale or for use, uh, and uh, and you don't have an outlet for them currently or through the FEMA site, at this point, I'm going to uh, hand it over to my colleague Joseph Gozar, uh, the account executive for the South Sound and North Peninsula, and he'll explain a little bit more about the assessment and and review process, and then go into the Q and A that the participants might have. So I'll turn it over to Joseph. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. Before we open it up for your questions, we'd like to remind you that there are three additional calls scheduled over the next few weeks. Please notify your supply chain and industry friends about these calls. We all want to do our part to keep our colleagues as safe as we can. I also want to remind you that this meeting has been recorded, that you can watch the meeting at any time simply by clicking the same link that brought you here. There are two steps that you need to take to get your free assessments and consulting. The first is you need to reach out to uh, and contact Impact Washington. If you're in Pierce County, you can email me at jgosar at impactwashington.org. And for those of you on the phone, that is J as in Jack, G as in good, O as in Oscar, S as in Sam, A as in Arnold, and R as in Roger. J Gosar at impactwashington.org. If you're in another part of the state, you can always em email info at impactwashington.org. Or if you are lucky enough to be online and you can see the map and your geographical area, you can contact your representative at Impact Washington directly via their email now. The second step is that Impact Washington uh, we'll contact you to set up a time for us to talk. We'll go over some of the intake, some intake questions so that we can identify your specific needs and concerns. After this initial dis uh, introduction discussion, uh, 
we will set at a time for a consultant uh, to assist your company. I will add that these consultants are really good at what they do, and I promise that the time that you spend with them will be productive and informative. Your takeaways from our consultants will be a report documenting your risk levels, your current efforts that you're taking to mitigate any risks, and planned or proposed improvements based upon the discussions that you've had with the consultant. I encourage you to leverage this resource as other manufacturers have found it extremely helpful and reassuring. As additional Impact Washington recovering, recovery consulting programs come online, Impact Washington representatives will contact you further uh, to offer any additional resources and consulting access that we can. Uh, we don't really have any uh, questions that uh, at this time I would uh, suggest that if you have any you could uh, post them now uh, you can wiggle your mouse and it will show a uh, Q&A section button that will allow you to to write in. So this is Jeff again, just another comment uh, on what uh, what Joseph said. This um, this consulting, uh, which is done, actually can be done uh, can be done online, and uh, that's how we've been conducting these um, uh, these assessments. And there are instances where we're able to uh, take a little tour through the through the plant. Uh, via a FaceTime or equivalent uh, um, uh, process where uh, we look at the areas that are perhaps most vulnerable to risk and uh, we would take a look at existing process and procedures you have in place. Uh, probably most companies uh, that we're finding have put together back to work measures and we'll review those, comment on those and uh, and be able to uh, uh, and be able to assist you in comments uh, to make improvements. So one question that was offered is if there are any certifications uh, that are available to uh, show if a facility meets. Uh, so I see. Um, I see. There's one question: uh, Is there a certification available that your facility meets these standards? Um, and the answer to that is there's not a uh, a, certi a certification per se. However, uh, we have we provide a written report uh, on what we've found, and so obviously uh, we found that our that our clients are putting that into their SOPs, and um, uh, and and then uh, share those with their employees, with their suppliers, etc. To uh, to determine or to to demonstrate that there has been a third party who has also taken a look at their at their process and procedures. There's a, another question uh, that uh, Jamie there's another asked. question. Does the state or Pierce County have a date where an essential business can go from working with half a crew for safety to back to normal capacity? Um, I don't think that I'm qualified to answer that question. Um, I believe that the governor has not made a statement yet on um, uh, on where non-essential business can go back to work uh, or to to expand from a limited crew to a full crew to normal capacity. But uh, but we'll be. We'll be listening for that to come. I don't know, uh, Matt, if you have any more information on that, please, please add in. Jeff, um, I, I currently don't. <clears throat> Are there any other specific questions that anybody has about the uh, about the services that were that are being offered? 
or uh, any other questions about about anything. OK, well, we uh, really want to appreciate we want to say that we appreciate your participating uh, in this webinar. Um, thanks again for joining us and uh, thanks to our partner, the Economic Development Board, Tacoma Pierce, and to the sponsors of the webinar, Pierce County, uh, City of Lakewood, City of Puyallup, City of Sumner, and the City of Tacoma. Uh, again, if you have questions or additional um, uh, or need additional information, please visit the Impact Washington.org website. We have not only a copy of this recording and information relating to uh, to it, but there is a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of other resources that are being constantly curated and updated that are that are useful to manufacturing. Uh, uh, once again, uh, uh, a recording of this webinar will be on our uh, um, on our website and uh, on that of the EDB and possibly of other of our sponsors. You can also click on the link you got to get here and a complete recording will be, be available and viewable there. So we'll close this first webinar. Uh, again, there will be three subsequent webinars. There's one on, on Thursday of this week, Monday, or sorry, uh, Tuesday and Thursday of next week, same time. There will be basically the same content. If you have, if you have suppliers, uh, other people in your supply chain, clients, or others who you feel might benefit from, from knowing more about this uh, uh, service that we're offering, please ask them to attend. Uh, we'd love to talk to them and we hope to be able to work with you to help get, get you back to work uh, safely and efficiently. So thank you very much for your attendance. This will, this will end the webinar.